Okay, so um, I just recently finished uh, watching uh, Bump, the first season. I have known about this show for quite a few years, probably ever since it came out in 2020, but I um, didn't really have any interest in, in watching it until um, the very recent release of season two, which only came out like just less than a month ago. So I um, had very low expectations about this show, but I was actually quite surprised of how good the first season was. Um, it was very, very good. So, but anyway, um, let me go over the cast. Um, bear with me, I'm um, using my phone because I usually can't, still can't remember the names of a lot of these actors. I can't even remember the name of the creator, but I do know it's a she, so I'll probably um, I'll probably speak more about that in season two, where I'm a bit, bit more knowledgeable about the people behind the show. But bear with me, this is a season one review of Bump. So Bump stars Natalie Morris as the protagonist, Ollie, Claudia Carvan as Angie, Dam Angie Davis, Ollie's mum, Angus Sampson, Ollie's dad-ish, um, Safia Arayan as Rima, Ricardo Shearling, which is Matias, Carl Sanson Jr., Sarah McCune, and of course Peter Thornwald as Lockie. And it follows the story of Ollie as um, she gets an unexpected pregnancy, which is funny because before I watched Bump, I kind of thought that um, this first season was like her realising that she was pregnant and coming to terms, but it's not like that at all. She gives birth in the pilot episode. I mean, like, she didn't even realise she was pre pregnant, like, only, like, about 15 minutes in, uh, out it pops, and her life is changed forever. So, basically, this whole first season of the show is showing emotionally and visually how her life is turned upside down with an unwanted baby that, basically, she wants to throw in a bin at first sight. But, of course, uh, she, she doesn't feel that way for long. A few episodes in, and she's... She gets accustomed to having the baby and gets used to it, but the whole first season is just like showing, like um, juggling the emotions that she feels, kind of like from like anger to like denial to overall acceptance. I won't go into any more spoilers than that, but um, I will go over the cast. So I actually did really like Natalie Morris as Ollie. She was, um, I thought, put on a great performance as the uh, the main character, and I do feel like this is a uh, I mean, I've never been put in this position, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people can relate with unwanted pregnancies, and it's a bit of a brave move for a show to do that, and it's cool that it's an Australian show too, because you don't really get too many of those these days, especially ones that are broadcast worldwide. Um, I'll just let that slide. Um, but anyway, it's, it's really good, and... Basically, um, I, I like the overall character of Natalie Morris. So, I've, um, from watching the first season, you pretty much get to know everything about this character. She is an atheist, bit of an activist for like equal rights. She's very um, academic, very st studious, and of course, all that kind of gets thrown out the window when she has to see to a baby. And you know, she gets set those thoughts like, "Oh my God, my career is ruined, my future is ruined. I have to look after this baby for the rest of my life." and had to put myself into this baby and everything I want to do with my life is down the toilet, it's all shit. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people can, re can relate to that. But also what the show tries to communicate as well, that having a baby is not the end of the world, it is fun and it is definitely not a curse, it is a gift, much to the dismay of um, Ollie. But Ollie isn't the only great character in the show. Every character is good. I really don't really see any bad performances from the show. I love Claudia Caravan as Angie. She plays a really good mother character. I love Lockie, Peter Thumwald as um, Lockie. Ollie's like an um, Asian friend. He was really funny also. Was, um, put on put out a really good performance as well. But really out of all of them, the one that really stands out to me is Angus Sampson. I actually really like this guy in Bump. He is very likable, very funny. Um, extremely relatable for an Aussie bloke. I mean, he is like the modern Aussie bloke who kind of like doesn't really know what to do with his life. He's kind of like the Australian male cruiser, basically just trying to enjoy everything that comes towards him. Tries to forgive. He basically forgives everyone except himself, which is very relatable as well. Basically like this massive outpouring of positive energy. The only unfortunate thing is everybody else thinks he's a piece of shit, which makes him a great character. Um, I 
and I'm very excited to see more from Angus Sampson because I haven't seen him in much. The only other performance I have seen him in is, of course, Mad Max Fury Road as the organic mechanic. And he was an extremely minor character in that movie. He only got like four lines in the entire movie, which is a bit unfortunate. But in this show, he is shown much more of his acting skill and I really like him as an actor and I think he is great. So basically the first season of the show revolves around two families. Um, Ollie's uh, uh, Australian family that lives in Sydney and the Indian family that she's introduced to when she realised that um, her Hispanic boyfriend knocked her up and it kind of like shows like is she in love with him, isn't she in love with him, is he just sticking with him for the journey. And like the show like juggles concepts of like, you know, like marriage, like people who, is marriage a blessing or is marriage a curse, being bound to relationships and then breaking apart easily, trying to make it more complicated as it is, but it's actually extremely simple. And overall, a few pretty edgy topics that were um, actually handled surprisingly well. I was actually quite impressed by the first season of Bump. It was entertaining, it was funny. It also had some hard-hitting emotional moments, some good drama as well. I mean, nothing, nothing like, um, like outstanding, but like it was good. It wasn't bad. It was for most Australian com um, dramas and drama comedy hybrids that I've seen. This one is probably one of the best I've seen so far. So I am excited to see what season two brings. I haven't watched the start of season two yet. In fact, in fact, I only watched the final episode twenty minutes ago. So um, this is extremely fresh, but I started watching the series about two or three weeks ago and I was pleasantly surprised of what uh, Screen Australia was meant, was um, pumped out with this production. I am very excited to see where it goes and we have a very promising um, Australian drama series on our hands here. So overall, I'm not going to give this a score. I think I'm, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit conflicted whether I should keep the scores or let go of them. A lot of other YouTubers are phasing them out, but of course this is my decision, but I think from the time being I'm just going to say if I recommend it or I don't. I absolutely recommend this series so far for season one. As I said, it is not outstanding, but it is great. Not good, great. But overall, definitely watch if you have Stan. I wouldn't rush to to sign up for Stan, like for like Better Call Saul or like Breaking Bad or other stuff like that. But for an Australian drama, this was pretty damn good. So overall, I will talk, tell you about my opinion of season two when I finish watching it. It'll come out soon, I won't say when, but overall, um, I liked it. So hope you've enjoyed my opinion. Thanks for supporting the channel and as always, uh, take care.